today we'll be talking about anti-infective drugs and we'll be talking about antibiotics and also a little bit on antiviral drugs as well. I'll be discussing what is meant by broad spectrum antibiotics, also narrow spectrum antibiotics. I'll be discussing uh, resistance, uh, what develops to resistance, and how to prevent resistance. And uh, we'll be discussing the main classes of antibiotics and the mechanism of action of the main classes along with, uh, with possible side effects from those drugs. First, it's very important to know um, what the purpose of antibiotics are. And we're either going to treat or prevent an infection. Normally, we think of treatment. Uh, however, we'll look at prevention uh, of an immune-compromised patient having to take antibiotics to prevent an infection. So we'll take a look at that as well. Um, Mostly, we'll be looking at uh, bacteria, um, and we'll be looking a little bit about viruses. And the biggest thing to remember, if you remember nothing else from this lecture, is that antibiotics will not do anything for a viral infection. I don't care what kind of antibiotics you have, or how expensive, or how potent they are, they will not do anything for a viral infection. We have uh, a bacterial uh, side on bacterial static. Bacterial cytal, we're looking at killing and bacterial status inhibiting growth of the bacteria. Just basic definitions. First of all, how do you even know the patient has an infection um, when they come into the office? Well, first of all, the patient was going to have a fever. Uh, normal temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. Next, increase white blood count. Uh, normal white blood count is going to be somewhere between 3,000 and 9,000. So if you have a patient with an elevated white blood count, that could be another sign of infection. Uh, last but not least, I'll discuss the next two together. Um, warm, well, uh, swelling, drainage, pus of the area, uh, tenderness uh, is also a cardinal sign of an infection. So usually we, we look at all these together. So patients are at higher risk for infection than other patients. One, the immune compromised patient, such as HIV and AIDS, cancer treatment, patient who's taken corticosteroids, and diabetes are some examples. Let me discuss some of these. First, with dive with our cancer treatment. If a patient is taking chemotherapy, not only is it killing the bad cells, but it's also killing the good cells. Uh, so a patient who is under chemotherapy uh, is going to have a greater risk for for infection. Next, patients who who has taken corticosteroids. Um, if the patient is going to be on corticosteroids for longer than approximately 30 days, then we need to be concerned about decreased immune system. But if a patient is only going to be on corticosteroid for uh, 7, 14 days, um, then that's the patient's not going to be on, on a corticosteroid long enough to decrease their immune system. This is often why you see a medrol dose pack um, prescribed with uh, an antibiotic for a upper or lower respiratory tract infection. Um, and then with diabetes, uh, a statistic, uh, if you can keep a patient's diabetes under control, you can reduce infection by 50%. Uh, next, uh, discussing with age, infants and elderly, and the next slide will actually explain that a lot better than, uh, than, uh, than discussing it. And acute chronic disease, I think we already discussed that uh, up uh, on the previous bullet point. So the, the thymus is what uh, we're looking at here. So your our, our infants and our elderly, so our, our infants are going to be here, and our geriatric patients here. So this is really where our, um, um, why we're seeing the infants and elderly at high risk for infection. Um, the biggest thing I, to look at with gram positive, gram negative, we'll look at spectrums uh, with narrow spectrum, broad spectrum antibiotics, but, but it's also important to know that uh, gram positive is one cell wall and gram negative is two cell walls. Um, factors contributing to resistance, one, widespread use of antibiotics, so, um, and antibiotics being used when not needed. So again, antibiotics won't do anything for viral infection. And last, uh, levels less than therapeutic. So, uh, if we need 100 milligrams to kill the bacteria, but for whatever reason we're only prescribing 75, uh, this is going to, to potentially lead to resistance. Uh, allergic reaction, anaphylactic shock, and rash. I think we're already familiar with this. I'll move on. 
secondary infection, some books refer to this as a uh, super infection. Um, I'm not, um, uh, I don't like it referred to as a super infection, but, but some do. But basically all this is is killing the normal flora or normal bacteria uh, that's already present, and then that's just allowing an opportunistic infection like oral, oral uh, thrush or yeast infection, for example, with some antibiotics. Giving our higher generation antibiotics or a combination of antibiotics will put a patient at greater risk for developing this. Uh, outcome. So um, you put the patient on an antibiotic and they come back into the office in um, 7 to 14 days for, uh, for a uh, checkup and how do you know the patient is now well? Okay. So the temperature will return to normal, signs will improve, infection will resolve, white blood count will uh, normalize and culture will become negative. So at this point in time you can you can tell the patient uh, that, that at least for, for now this infection is going away. Uh, reasons why treatment may have failed, well, inappropriate antibiotic. Maybe the patient has a gram-negative uh, bacteria, uh, but you were treating them with a gram-positive uh, antibiotic. Or inadequate blood levels. So again, we needed to give a higher dosage of a particular antibiotic, but for whatever reason we did not. Um, I'll discuss this one and this one together. Um, the patient, uh, and I, I think most people are guilty of doing this, taking an antibiotic until they feel better, and then they'll save the rest of it for next time, but uh, that, uh, that just increases risk for re resistance. Uh, so it's important for the patient to take the, the full uh, 10 to 14 days of antibiotics, uh, with the exception with the, with the Zithromax or Zithromycin, or the Tripac, uh, or the bacteria could simply just be resistant. Now the way to, to prevent all of that from happening is to do something called a culture and sensitivity test. And basically what you do is you take a sample and you send it off to the lab and it comes back and it tells you what bacteria you're dealing with. It tells you if it's gram positive or gram negative. And it's going to tell you which antibiotics are susceptible to it and which antibiotics are not susceptible to it. Uh, and it's the easiest way to, to, to uh, uh, prevent resistance and also to let you know exactly what antibiotics you need to be prescribing uh, the particular patient. Uh, next we're going to actually what a culture sensitivity test is. So here's a picture of, of the lab of what will happen uh, and, and these little discs are actually antibiotics. Uh, and you might not be able to tell, but there's marking on, on the actual discs. So what we're seeing here is it's inhibiting the growth of the bacteria. So for example, uh, this would be a good choice to put the patient on. Um, this, however, would not be a good choice to put the patient on. Um, so this one would be a good choice, for, for example, because this one inhibit the growth of the bacteria. Adverse reactions to anti-infective drugs. I, I think uh, everyone's familiar with this, so I'm going to move on. Uh, now, I talked about earlier about uh, putting the patients on, on antibiotics to treat infections. Now we're going to look at putting the patients on antibiotics to prevent an infection. Um, for example, patients that go on GI surgery, uh, there's a lot of uh, E. coli in, in, the, uh, in the GI. So the, when the patient goes in for surgery, and, and uh, and the GI is opened up, there's a possibility that uh, uh, the bacteria could get out from its, uh, from its area. Uh, also, patients undergoing um, uh, certain dental procedures, uh, for example, if the patient's had a heart to valve replacement, uh, there's a lot of gram positive bacteria in, the, in your mouth. So when the dentist is in there working around and somebody gets in your bloodstream, that could go to your heart and potentially cause problems. Now, also, IV drug users uh, are, are another group that uh, um, can potentially have, have um, uh, complications. Gram positive, gram negative, as I mentioned before, gram positive one cell wall, gram negative two cell walls, that will be important. Uh, now we'll be discussing different classes of antibiotics and how those different classes uh, work. And um, I'll be doing that in actually the, uh, the next segment uh, on this. So this is part one, and I'll show you part two.